All right, so we talked uh, in the syllabus a little bit that we're going to be doing some career exploration. And so part of that career exploration is we are going to be doing uh, a presentation. Each of you is going to pick a topic of a career related to the architecture and construction industry. Uh, and then you are going to present to the class a five minute oral presentation on that career. Now I do ask that if you've picked a career for another class, for example, the exploratory class, uh, Mr. Dalton or Mr. Um, Lennox, if you've had their classes, that you pick a different topic because this is about exploring different careers. And so, you know, you really want to be able to um, pick a different career. So in your Google Classroom, if you go to classwork and scroll down to the bottom, you should see career exploration and click on that. There's a couple things here for you. There is the document, uh, which um, gives you an explanation. We're going to read that here in a minute. There's also the presentation template for you to get started in. You're going to design your own uh, presentation. And then there is uh, the topics for you to choose from. And we're going to have one person per topic. So the first person to come up and tell me which topic they want, that is uh, how we're going to do that. But before you do that, we're going to click on the research project. So you can follow along. You can have that open. You can follow along on the screen up here, uh, however you want to do that um, to, to understand what we're going to be doing here. All right. So you, uh, Academy Making One Career Research Project, you were required to do a research project on a career related to the cabinet making or the architecture and construction career cluster. The project will have a five minute oral presentation in which you'll use Google Drive or uh, slides to assist your delivery. Please re, uh, refer to the research grading rubric below to know how I will grade each project. The link to your slideshow and notes on other students is to be emailed to me through the state email. If you uh, are sharing that with me, you shouldn't have to share that through Google Classroom because I already have a copy of it. You'll be provided with a link or a list of topics that are available for you. The list of careers from the architecture and career cluster, only one student per topic. The first student to contact me will be given that topic and we'll do that here in just a little bit. Your presentation should include but not limited to the following information about the career or careers you choose. You're going to talk about the pay, whether it's salary or hourly. You're going to talk about uh, how much the pay is. And again, this is just some suggestions here. If you want to go further into this or, uh, you know, in a little different area than this, this is fine. This is just some ideas for you. You're going to talk about the schooling or experiences needed to get into that profession. The costs associated with that career as far as tools of the trade, you know, how many tools do you have to purchase to, just to start or uh, over time. Maybe health hazards of the career, you know, are you breathing heavy chemicals or sawdust all day? What kind of career or health hazards might be in, associated with that? And, you know, some optional things would include like maybe the history of the career. When was it? When did it start? Uh, you know, when did it become a mainstream type career? And you could uh, discuss related careers a little bit and, and uh, some of those, how it relates to your specific topic or maybe it was uh, you know, started from, from the career you chose. Your grade will not be given for backgrounds, colors, or themes of your slideshow. However, your grade will come from the content and organization of the slideshow. The slideshow must include a minimum of eight slides, not including a title page or works cited page, but no more than 25 slides in your presentation. You'll need to have a title page that has a topic, class name, class block, date, and your name. You must also have a works cited page or a bibliography. That should be the last slide in your slideshow. You should use at least four credible sources, not including pictures. The slideshow should cover the main topics and important aspects of the career you choose. When you present to the class, you should not read word for word from the slideshow. You should have note cards and use notes when presenting. So what we don't want you to do is have the exact, what, we don't want you to do what I'm doing today and have the exact same thing up there that you're reading to us because you're giving us a presentation. So we want pictures, we want notes, bulleted points up there 
and you're going to go into depth a little bit from your notes, maybe on a, on a piece of paper or printed that you've printed off or maybe on a note card. Okay. So what we see up there is just some highlighted information, maybe just some pictures, some information like that. Okay, uh, any student who copies directly word for word from any books, magazines, credit, uh, articles, or credible internet sources, or people who work in the profession without quoting the information in a citation on the works cited page will be given a zero. This is considered plagiarizing. You must use quotes when putting any information into your presentation that it did not come directly from you. When you use pictures, you must also state where you found it, including the information below the picture. Again, any student plagiarizes will be given a zero for the assignment. Okay, so if you are copying from a website, okay, and you're copying like a paragraph of information, which you shouldn't do because we don't want a paragraph of information up there, you need to make sure that information is quoted. If you're getting your information, all your facts from certain websites, then that website needs to be listed in the Works Cited page. All we need to do is give credit to the people who provided the information, okay? If you did not come up with this yourself, just give credit where you found that information. So it said in pictures, pictures need to be cited below. This is a picture that used to be on my website, something I created several years ago when I started. All right, so when you see pictures like this, what I want you to do is right below it, cite the source. So this was taken from my website years ago. You won't find it there now. But if it's a long URL, Okay, maybe you found it from some really lengthy URL, then copy and paste that. You don't have to have full size text of the URL. You can put it size six or five font, just so we see a little blue smear below there that someone could click on there and see where you found the pictures, okay? So make sure you're citing your pictures directly below where they go. Now, if you, cite, if you only have a picture from a certain website, you don't need to add it to the Works Cited page because the Works Cited page is for the information. The pictures are going to be cited separately below the picture, okay? So if you go to the, uh, the next page here, we're going to talk about the rubric and how you're going to be graded, okay? So about half of this presentation is following instructions from building your presentation. The other half is from you getting up here and presenting. So if we look at time, this is going to be something that is actually your performance-based, so did the presentation last five minutes? If so, you'll get five points there. Uh, it, did the presentation last, or was it only four minutes in length and so on, down to two and a half? If it's shorter than two and a half, you get a zero on there. You didn't meet adequate time. There's a multiplier. So you got five, uh, you put that there times 30. That gives you 30 points for that category. So each category is weighted. Slides, if you want maximum points, you have a minimum of eight slides, not including title or works cited pages. Okay, and then it goes down from there. If you have less than uh, one slide, then you didn't meet the required uh, information and you're gonna get a zero on that. Slide information. Each slide has only information and pictures relevant to the presentation. So if you're giving a, uh, a presentation on uh, a carpenter, and you have a picture of a hot rod in there and that's more related to auto mechanics, that really isn't relevant to your presentation. So keep your pictures uh, relevant to the topic that you're presenting on, okay? Now, if you're showing a picture of a wrench, oh well, yeah, maybe a wrench could be used by a contractor. And so that's a little bit more relevant, but showing a picture of a hot rod really wouldn't be relevant because that has nothing to do with the industry. So, is each slide only contain relevant stuff? Yes, no, one slide didn't, so on until you get down that none of the slides had relevant information. Title page, okay? So the only the first one so far was uh, performance-based. Slides, did you follow instructions? Do you have a minimum of eight slides? Slide info, is your info that you provided only uh, pertinent to the presentation? So that's another uh, following instructions. Title page, was there a title page? Yes or no? That's 30 points just for having a title page. And another 50 points to have the correct format, okay? And the format is that it has your topic, your name, your class name, and block name, and date. So five things you need on there. If you're missing one, it drops you down a category. So just to have a title page in the correct format is gonna be 
uh, 80 points of the 300, and, 300 point presentation. So following instructions is uh, a part of this as well as your performance. Works cited page, is there one, yes or no? And sources, did you use at least credible, uh, four credible sources and cited picture location under all pictures? Okay, so following instructions again, did you do that? Now here's a couple performance based ones. The person sitting furthest away, which will usually be me, I'll move to the back of the room so I can see if I can hear you, okay? Can the person sitting the furthest away hear you speaking all the time? Most of the time there was a few cutouts or maybe I had to strain real hard to hear you and I couldn't really understand what you were saying and so forth, okay? That's only uh, 10 points out of the 300, okay? You know, some of you get nervous and some of you don't wanna speak so loud, that's fine. It does affect your points, but it's not a huge chunk like the title pages were. Reading, okay? Did the slides only had main topics? You use note cards or did not read word for word? So this is where we're getting bulleted points on the screen or pictures, and you are then elaborating off of your notes, or maybe you have it all memorized. That's fine too. You don't have to have notes if you've got it all in your mind, okay? You read a small amount, maybe one or two slides. You read word for word. The majority of the presentation was word for word and so on until you get down to zero points. And then 60 points just for getting up here, standing in front of the class and presenting. Even if you don't meet the five minutes, but you got up here, you gave an effort, you're going to get 60 points for the project. Okay. So again, some of these are performance-based and some of them are following instruction, about half of each, okay? A couple things uh, to lose points, zero for plagiarizing. I've never given a zero, but please cite your sources. And late, if uh, we're gonna present these on a certain day and your time to present, and you come up to me and say, oh, I'm not ready for the day, then you're gonna lose 25% off of the project. So the most you would get is, I don't even know what 25% of 300 is. Okay, the most you would get would be 75% of 300 points. So be ready when the time comes. And um, what we're looking at is, is we'll look at the class calendar for the due date on that. Okay, any questions on the project uh, presentation guidelines, rubric? Okay. So now what you're going to do is we're going to look at the topics. And so if you go back to Google Classroom, you'll find a list of topics. So I'm going to click on this architecture and construction. It's going to bring open a PDF and you can scroll through there. These would be, according to SD My Life, the careers that are related to the architecture and construction industry. Okay. And to give more choices, that's why we're doing architecture and construction industries not just cabinet making. So you can scroll through this list, take a look, find a topic that uh, meets your needs or you would like to learn more about. And then uh, you're gonna come up and tell me your topic. Now, what I do not want you to do is say you work carpentry uh, work in the summer, we wanna do some career exploring. So pick a different career. Maybe pick an electrician, something that's still related to carpentry but maybe something you're not as well versed in, okay? Or don't know as much about. We really want this to be a learning experience. I don't want you to stand up here and be like, well, I did this this summer and this this summer. Okay, we're, we're trying to get this a learning experience for you to do a little background into a career. Now there's a couple good websites that I would recommend using. One would be SD My Life. Okay, SD My Life has you can click on this topic and it'll give you all kinds of information related to state out, outlooks for the job, salary, things like that. You could also go to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. That's gonna be a good website for career related or related information for different topics. Now that's not gonna be as specific to South Dakota as more of a nationwide outlook on that specific job. Make sure you're looking at credible sources uh, when you're doing credible sources, you know, is it a .gov website? Is it a .edu website? Uh, and then also your pictures. Just please remember that Google is not a source for your pictures. When you go to Google and type in a picture of a crane, okay, that picture is not from Google. Google is just finding that for you. 
So you need to actually click on the picture, go to that site and copy the URL. Okay, Google, Yahoo, Bing, those are not sources for your pictures. Okay, keep that in mind as you are citing your information. 